So we're going to take a look at the silly claims of evolution. We've been looking high and low for a one-functioning brain cell in those who claim there's no God and we came from a dot of nothing. Whack an atheist is fun, it's easy to learn, and it's addictive. I am enjoying doing these, okay? The Bible says, the fool has said in his heart, there's no God. If you don't believe in God, you are a fool. I'll call you that to your face. You're a fool. God said you are, so I can't. Small children can learn how to do it, and it's really fun to whack them with real science. Whack them gently in Christian love. We're trying to get them back to common sense. We're like, wake up. Okay? So let's see. Uh, this game is very simple. As long as they keep their head down, they don't get whacked. Isn't that the way whack-a-mole works? Simple. Atheists, quit making dumb statements and you won't get whacked. The share of Americans who identify as atheists has increased modestly but significantly in the past decade. In the last 10 years, the number of atheists went from 2% to 4%. Four percent claim to be atheist, and they think they're the smartest people in the world. They really do, okay? The literal definition of atheist is a person who does not believe in the existence of a god or supreme gods, okay? Let's see. Uh, in, in Europe, it's a higher percentage. The highest one is Czechoslovakia with uh, 25 percent claiming to be atheist. But in America, it's two percent. In U.S., atheists are mostly men and relatively young. According to the study, 7 in 10 atheists are men. Median age for atheists is 34. I have a theory about that. They don't like God's rules on, you know, thou shalt not commit adultery, that kind of stuff. That's why they like atheism. It's a great excuse for immorality, isn't it, guys? Yeah, okay. Uh, they, uh, 4 in 10 have a college degree compared with 27% of the uh, general pop public. They tend to be aligned with the Democrat Party. I'm just reading the Pew Research, okay? The vast majority of atheists say religion is, is not too or not at all important in their lives, 93%. They seldom or never pray, 97%. At the same time, many do not see a contradiction between atheism and pondering their place in the world. About a third of American atheists say they think about the meaning and purpose of life at least weekly. You should. You really should, guys, okay? And they feel a deep sense of spiritual peace and well-being. In fact, well, they often feel a peace. Oh, the religious landscape study shows atheists are more likely than U.S. Christians to say they often feel a sense of wonder about the universe. Over half the atheists really have a sense of wonder about the universe. <laughs> there's, there's a God, guys, okay. And it's okay. It's okay to say, wow, what a mighty God we serve. Atheists are more likely to find overall meaning in finances. What's important to an atheist? Well, money, hobbies, travel. That's important to them. Agnostics, similar. In many cases, being an atheist isn't just about personally rejecting religious labels. Most atheists express negative views when asked about the role of religion. Not only are they don't believe in God, they don't like those who do. Hmm. Seven in ten atheists say religion's influence is declining, and this is a good thing. According to the 2019 survey, fewer than one in five U.S. adults overall share this view. A majority of atheists, 70%, say churches and other religious organizations, organizations do more harm than good. Even larger, 93% say religious institutions have too much influence in U.S. politics. So the winner of today's Whack an Atheist Prize, Richard Dawkins. Dawkins, again, second time, Richard, I'm, anytime I'll debate you live, come right here, you can sit right here, Dinosaur Adventure Land, you can show me all the evidence for evolution and why you reject God. He, he wrote the book, The Greatest Show on Earth, The Evidence for Evolution. Really? It was a blind watchmaker. Yeah, you don't need a maker to make a watch, they can happen by themselves, can't they, Richard? Okay. The God Delusion. Yeah, okay. The Devil's Chaplain. He wrote a lot of books, okay? He says, much as we might wish to believe otherwise, universal love and the welfare of the species as a whole are concepts which simply do not make evolutionary sense. Good thinking, Richard. Why would people love each other? Why would there be any love at all if evolution is true? Do you think the lion loves the zebra? Yeah, for supper. Mm-hmm. 
There are no Christians, as far as I know, blowing up buildings. I'm not aware of any Christian suicide bombers. I'm not aware of any major Christian denomination that believes the penalty for apostasy is death. I have mixed feelings about the decline of Christianity, insofar as Christianity might be a bulwark against something worse. You're on to something there, Richard. He said, I'm against religion because it teaches us to be satisfied with not understanding the world. you got to be kidding. There are millions of really, really, really smart people who believe in God. Okay, millions of them. Can smart people still believe in God? Do smart people believe in God? Are atheists smarter than believers? Not exactly. Mm. It's why smart people believe in God. Are religious people really less smart? No. I think you're dumb to not believe in God. And I have a one... I, I wonder about the world. I marvel at God. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A, a real honest, true Christian loves to study nature, study the word, study anything. Learn the truth. God told Abraham, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. Now, the, the number of stars visible without a telescope at all is about 1,200, 1,500, somewhere in there. God told this to Abraham 2,000 years B.C., about, what, 3,000 years, 3,500 years before they invented the telescope. He said, you won't be able to number the stars. And for years, everybody thought the Bible was wrong right there. He said, yeah, you can. There's about 1,500 of them. Can we number the stars? Anybody know, is it possible to number the stars? Richard, it's okay to study and be a Christian. Paul, uh, Psalms, the psalmist said, when I consider thy heavens... Wasn't that fun? Last night going out on those sand dunes watching the stars. you got to come to Dinosaur Adventureland. You want to see stars? Come see them from here. we got them all. Okay, right? Free. He said, What is man that thou art mindful of him? A person who studies God's creation is really wondering, God, why do you pay attention to us at all? We are really nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Okay? Solomon said in Proverbs 6, Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Now, hold on a minute. How could Solomon in 1000 BC know that all the worker ants are female? They are, by the way. Consider her ways and be wise. Yeah! Which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? A little sleep, a little folding of the slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come. Solomon said, if you don't learn to work like the ant when the opportunity is there, you're going to be broke when the winter time comes. Work. Richard Dorkin said, it's absolutely safe to say, if you meet someone who claims not to believe in evolution, that person is either ignorant, stupid, or insane. Well, what do you mean by evolution? This is the problem. This word is very slippery. The textbook says, life has evolved on Earth. They start this in second grade. Second grade textbook right here on the shelf uh, down at the bottom. Okay, They start pushing their propaganda, their religious belief in kindergarten with dinosaurs before the kid can read. They have a book on dinosaurs. Would anybody want to guess what the first sentence in the book says? Millions of years ago. The kid can't even read yet. And they're already being brainwashed to believe the stupid evolution religion. I always define, when I do debates against people, I define the word. What do you mean by evolution? Is it cosmic evolution, the origin of time, space, matter? Where did matter come from? Where did space come from? Where did time come from? They say, well, it came from the Big Bang. That's not an answer. What exploded? Where did the energy come from? Where did space come from, come from for it to expand into? Where did time come from? You didn't answer any of the questions. Time, space, matter. The Bible does that in one verse. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Thunderstorm here, folks. Sorry if you get a little override. <clears throat> I'll try to... I don't know if I can out-talk the thunder or not, <clears throat> but okay. Cosmic evolution is the first thing you have to have. The origin of time, space, matter. They don't have a good theory on that. Secondly, you'd have to have chemical evolution. If the Big Bang took place, which it did not, it would create hydrogen and maybe helium, helium and some lithium. Well, how do you get all the 92 elements plus the synthetic ones? A third theory of life's origin is known as chemical evolution. Where did the chemicals come from? Chemical evolution, theory of life's origins, chemical evolution. This is a problem for the evolution. Is that what you're talking about, Richard? See, they'll say the Big Bang made hydrogen and helium, maybe lithium. Okay, well, how do you get past iron? You can't fuse past iron. How do you get uranium? You're telling me you can get uranium and lead and gold from hydrogen gas? I'd like to know how to do that. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, we can get rich quicker. 
Iron cannot be fused into anything heavier because of the insane amounts of energy and force required to fuse iron atoms. Richard, iron is way back there in the periodic table, number 25, 26, 26. How do you go past iron? 92 elements. Each one gets more and more complicated, and you can't fuse, fuse past iron. The iron in a star's core isn't the reason why the star went supernova. Its overall mass may explode, but the iron in the core caused it to die. So you guys want me to believe in chemical evolution that all these elements evolve from hydrogen. I'm sorry. I think you have an insane, stupid theory. Number three, stellar and planetary evolution. Where did the stars and planets come from? Stellar evolution, the process by which a star changes over the course of time, depending on the mass of the star. Lifetime can range from a few million years to the most massive to trillions of years. Wait a minute. All of the stars are going downhill, blowing up, burning out. None of them are going, forming. You guys, there's a lot of stars out there. We don't see any of them form. We just see them fall apart, break down, burn out, blow up. That's the opposite of what you guys really need, okay? Stellar evolution in the form of these fuel consumption stages for their finality is important. All we see is backwards evolution when it comes to stars. Let me break for a second here, see if it lets up, okay? <clears throat> well, folks, we're going to continue with the thunderstorm blowing over Lenox, Alabama. The, back to, uh, 34 years ago, they admitted they do not know how a single star managed to form. They don't even have a good theory on star formation. Certainly no science, things that we know, nobody's ever seen. See, knowledge is things we can observe, study, test, and demonstrate. That's science. Star formation is not science. It's theoretical at best. Why do stars evolve? No, no. Do they evolve ought to be the question, you guys at Western Michigan. Stellar evolution, the birth, life, and death of a star. They make up these stories about a star nebula exploding and, tur and turning into a star. That's not observed. It's not science. There's no evidence for stellar evolution. So, Richard, I've been through my, in my seminar many times about the problems with the six different meanings of the word evolution. The origin of matter, where did it come from? The origin of all the chemicals, where did they come from? Where did stars come from? No one understands how star formation proceeds. It's really remarkable. We see stars blow up once in a while, nova or supernova. That's the opposite. That's a star breaking down. How many stars are there in the universe? Well, let's see. 70 billion trillion is the current estimate. That's a, a lot, yeah. 7 times 10 to the 22nd power, okay? These estimates depend upon the sensitivity of our current telescopes. Yep, I agree. We could talk all day about the stars. The Bible says God made the stars. No big deal. Why can't you worship a God like that? Abraham saw the one out, looked at the stars, and he believed God. And it was counted him for righteousness. There's a lot of stars. 70 sextillion stars, maybe three times more than that. We don't know. You can't count them. It's estimated there's enough stars out there that we know about that everybody on Earth could own 11 trillion of them to yourself. We should see 9.7 million new stars forming every minute. Haven't seen one. Never seen one. Then there'd have to be organic evolution, the origin of life. Somehow, life has to start from non-living material. Richard Dawkins said the essence of life is statistically imp a statistical improbability on a colossal scale. Richard, why do you believe it then? Why do you believe it? Have scientists made life in the laboratory? Absolutely not. Nowhere close. If we look at the simplest creatures on the planet, we find a wee bacterium that lives happily in the digestive tract of cows and goats. Mycoplasma mycosoids, it builds itself from a very modest blueprint, only 525 genes. It's one of the simplest life forms we've ever seen. Okay, tell you what, National Pornographic, a Geographic, get your smart scientists and build one from scratch. Make a bacteria. Just go ahead and make one. I'd like to see that. The simplest cell is more complex than the space shuttle. You think it happened by chance. A new theory of organic evolution. You can have all the theories you want. See, science is things we can demonstrate, and we know, we observe, we test. Theories of organic evolution. There's lots of theories. Show it, make it happen. Nobody knows how a mixture of lifeless chemicals evolved into the first living cell. They've known this for 20 years. 
They talk about primordial soup. I cover all this in seminar part four. Let's skip some of this for sake of time. Hit pause if you want to read these quotes. My point would be, Michael, uh, Richard, you said about evolution. If you don't believe in evolution, you're insane. Which meaning are you talking about? I'd say if you do believe in cosmic evolution, you're insane. If you do believe in chemical or organic evolution, you're insane. It's not part of science. You are insane for believing in it. Now, uh, let's see. Then, how was life formed? It came from a ball of molten rock. This is what the theory teaches, right? As the ball, molten ball of rock cooled, it hardened and formed a crust on the outside. I'm not making it up. This is what they teach the kids in school. The books are right here. 4.1 billion years ago, the crust of the Earth formed. It began to cool, creating solid surface with its rocky terrain. Clouds formed as the Earth began to cool, and it started raining on the oceans. Oh, okay. So it rained and rained and rained and made primordial soup. This is what they teach. You can watch my seminar part four where I cover this in great detail. So they think in the oceans there was a prebiotic soup. Here it is right here. Primordial soup. Rambles. Primordial soup. There we go. Okay. Whoa. <clears throat> Speak with authority here. Pay attention. So it's simple. It, it puddles evaporated down to concentrate the chemicals. The origin of life must have been a very local event. Have they made life in the laboratory? No, Richard, they have not. It's not part of science. And you said if a person doesn't believe it, he's insane or stupid or wicked. I think you're insane, stupid, or wicked for believing it. Certainly insane. Has the, the origin of life has not been explained. James Tour has some great stuff on this topic. No, it has not been explained. God said he made life. Genesis chapter 1. I don't think there's a better explanation. God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature. God's claiming he did it. God made man in his own image. God saw what he had made. Why can't you give God the glory? God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. See now that I, even I, am he, Deuteronomy 32, and there is no God with me. I kill, I make alive, I wound, I heal, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. God's claiming he did it. Nehemiah 9, thou, even thou art Lord alone. Thou hast made the heaven with all their host. God's claiming he made it all. Acts 17, God that made the world and all things therein. God who quickeneth all things, he, he brought life. So have scientists made life in the laboratory? They're nowhere close. If they did, it would only prove it takes intelligence to make life. God claims clearly that he did it. Until scientists prove life formed by chance without God, they should admit this is the vital first step of evolution. It is believed to have happened, and they should admit it is a religion. Evolution is a religion that people believe in. They believe in it very strongly, but it's not science. Then you have macroevolution. Somehow this first life form has to turn into something else. No, we've never seen that happen. We cover this in seminar part four. I want to get to something else here tonight. Four processes of evolution. What we observe are dogs producing dogs. That's been observed for a long time. There's a lot of different kinds of dogs. Usually through human intervention, they've developed big ones and little ones and hairy ones and curly tail and most of the ones developed by man wouldn't survive in nature. How long were the chihuahuas last out there in the woods? Not even one night. Wouldn't make it at all. And a four-year-old knows a dog, a wolf, and a coyote are the same kind of animal. We do that in my seminar series. I have a four-year-old do it. God said they'll bring forth after their kind. That's all we've ever seen. God said it ten times. So Darwin changed the word and talked about the origin of species. Well, lastly, we have microevolution, variations within the same kind. Now, this one happens. So, Richard, you said if a person doesn't believe in evolution, they're insane or wicked or, or something. Well, microevolution, we can see that. We can see the dogs produce dogs. Microevolution changes within a species or a small group of organisms. Sure, that happened. What is microevolution? Bacteria becoming resistant to, to uh, antibiotics or something. Examples of microevolution, the size of the sparrow. Did you know the sparrows up in Minnesota are bigger than the sparrows in Florida? Well, it's cold up there. They need a bigger body to survive to keep their body heat in. Of course they're bigger. Duh. This divergence in population is probably at least partly a result of natural selection. 
larger bodied birds can survive lower temperatures than small bodied birds. Duh. Still a bird. It's still a sparrow. Didn't change. Mosquitoes. There's a variety of mosquitoes. Okay, it's the Minnesota state bird, the mosquito. It says, the global temperature between 1880 and 2000, mosquito populations at 50 degrees north evolved to wait nine days later to go dormant. It's still a mosquito, guys. That's the best you've got. I'm going to skip up here. Dorkin said, or Dawkins said, everything surrounding us looks designed. So it is very tempting to attribute universe to a creator. Darwin's supreme achievement was to show us this to be an illusion. We now understand essentially how life came into being. Richard, no you don't. You are lying to your people, Richard. Nobody knows how it came to be. Nobody, and you don't either. We understand how essentially our life came to be, so we don't need God to explain fine-tuning and origin of the universe. Oh, you can say that if you want. This is your religious belief, Richard. This is not science. You need whack. Science is knowledge. This is not knowledge. This is a religious statement. You're an evangelist for a dumb religion. The Bible says the fool said in his heart, there's no God. Richard said, evolution is just a theory. Well, so is gravity. I don't see you jumping out of buildings. That's a cute statement, but gravity has things we can observe. You can actually watch the effects of gravity. You can measure the speed that gravity accelerates things. Galileo started that with the Leaning Tower of Pisa, dropping off the cannonball and the BB. Gravity just a theory? Well, it's more than that. It's, a, it's got some observations to it. What's the observation that a mosquito and a banana and a whale have a common ancestor? Where's the observation of any animal producing anything else? Richard, we got observations for gravity. You don't have any observations for evolution. The physicist's problem is the problem of the ultimate origin of the universe, our natural laws. Where did the laws come from? Second law of thermodynamics. Entropy is a measure of disorder in a system. All systems gain entropy over time. What? Everything's falling apart. How many have noticed that with your car, with your house, with your own body? I mean, everything just gradually falls apart, right? Go take a look in your closet if you don't believe me. Just go home and look, okay? I haven't even been to your closet, but I guarantee it's falling apart, right? Uh, first law says energy is always conserved. It cannot be created. Okay, then where did the energy come from to do this, to make everything? The universe is full of energy. Evolution violates the first and second law of thermodynamics, which says everything tends toward disorder. It's falling apart. Matter and energy cannot be created or destroyed. Can't be. The Bible says God did it. He said the heavens are going to perish. They're going to wax old. God gave the first and second law himself. Hebrews chapter 1. we got enough to go on that. Nothing gets better by itself. Okay, Take a look at your hairdo in the morning. You'll see what I'm talking about. Everything tends toward chaos. Textbook says Darwin speculated all forms of life are related. This speculation has been verified. No, it has not. They connect the lines to put all the types of life forms going back to a common ancestor. This is baloney. Everything inside that circle is pure religion. It's not science. Nothing and none of that's been observed. They say micro is just give it more time, it'll turn to macro. No, it won't. Streaming. No one's ever seen a dog produce a non dog. If it did, who would it marry? Who would the partly evolved dog marry? Variations happen, but they've got limits. Farmers have been trying to get bigger pigs for a long time. They got some pretty big ones. Do you think they'll ever get a pig as big as Texas? I bet there's a limit in there somewhere, way before you get to Texas. Roaches become resistant to pesticides over time. Still a roach. Do you think they'll ever become resistant to a sledgehammer? Uh, I'd say no. God said they'll bring forth after their kind, Richard. That's all we've ever seen. You might get variations of colors. we got enough stuff on seminar part four. Lots of stuff on this. Variations within the kind. And the new gene pool is more limited than before. Okay. Uh, there's varieties of corn in the world. They probably had a common ancestor called corn. You're never going to get a hamster or whale or tomato to grow on your corn stalk. God said he's gonna, they're going to bring forth after their kind. There are many varieties of human nose shapes and human ear shapes and human eye colors and eye shapes. They're still the same kind. It's an eye or an ear or a nose. There's different foot shapes. It's still a foot. Many different hand shapes. There's still a hand. Lip shapes. Still a lip. Dogs produce a variety of dogs. 95% of current dogs came from three, orig three original founding females. I would agree. Right here it says, dogs come from all sizes and shapes. 
but they evolved from a handful of wolves 15,000 years ago. I'd say more like 4,400 years ago. This Irish textbook calls it divergent evolution. Ah, come on, don't give it a fancy name. It's still a dog. Not divergent evolution. Opposite sides of the Grand Canyon have two different kinds of squirrels. We got them right above me here. You take a look at the squirrels, Kayabab squirrel and Abert squirrel. They might have had a common ancestor. Anybody want to guess what it was? A squirrel. God created them to bring forth after their kind. Richard says, one of the things that's wrong with religion is it teaches us to be satisfied with answers that are not really answers at all. Oh no, God said they'll bring forth after their kind. I'd say a horse and a zebra are the same kind of animal. They're nothing like a mosquito or a whale. You might get little bitty horses or great big horses, but you're going to get a horse when you crossbreed them every time. Every time. Horses, zebras can all be crossbred. Asses. They're still four-wheel drive, leather upholstery. I mean, come on, it's a horse family, okay? There's variations happen, wild variations, but they're still the same kind. Here's a herd of zebroids running around. See that one with the menorah on there? I thought it might be Photoshop, but somebody told me that's a real picture. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Okay, here's one forgot to put all his PJs on. I cover in seminar part four about they've spent how much money's been spent on the Kentucky Derby trying to get faster horses, would you guess? Millions and millions of dollars, right? In the last 100 years, they've gone from an average winning speed of 127 seconds down to 123. Even in the old days, they had some awfully good times. Question, if you want to win the Kentucky Derby, why don't you breed wings on your horse and fly around the track in 12 seconds, guys? All we observe are variations within the kind. Richard said, you cannot be both sane and well-educated and disbelieve in evolution. You're a priest for your religion, Richard. That's all you are. This is not science. This is a dogmatic statement from a priest of a dumb religion. Like the, Mormon, the Muslims saying you can't go to heaven unless you believe in our Allah. Or Mormons say you can't go to heaven unless you wear your holy underwear and do what we tell you to do. Every religion does this. You're nothing but a religious priest, Richard. All we see are variations within the same kind. They're a cat kind. Tigers and lions can be crossbred. You get a liger, still a cat. Variations of cow. Somebody crossed a buffalo and a bison and got a, be a buffalo, a beefalo. They crossed a d with a domestic cow. Three-quarter American buffalo. That must be the same kind. They crossbred a sheep with a goat and got a geep. That doesn't prove mosquitoes are related to whales. The walpin. Result of breeding a whale to a dolphin. Okay, who's it going to marry? Don't you have to get two at the same time of the opposite sex in the same location and they got to find each other and be interested? You got a whole bunch of problems, bud. They developed a, a, a crossed a llama with a camel and got a camel. Okay, so that's not proof mosquitoes are related to whales, Richard. The Bible says they'll bring forth after their kind. There's a variety of chickens, 195 varieties of chickens. Might have had a common ancestor, a chicken. They bring forth after their kind. But God claimed he formed the eye. You know, there's all kinds of different eyes. Some have a slit, some have a pupil. Some have a horizontal, horizontal slit and vertical slit. Interesting. There are different types of eyes out there. Different creatures have different kinds of eyes. God formed the eye. They say this is their scars of evolution because you can't see with a blind spot on the back. That's insane. We'll cover that another night. I mean... Darwin said, to suppose the eye could have been formed by natural selection seems, I freely confess, absurd. Now later he went on to talk about, oh, but it must have happened because we got one. It's religion. The back of your eyeball is about one square inch. The retina has 137 million light-sensitive cells. Has anybody ever done any electrical wiring at all, wired up outlets? Let me see you make 137 million connections in one square inch. The Heavenly Father did. One debate I was in, the guy said, the eye is wired backwards. The human eye is a poor design because it's got the blood vessels in front of the retina. So the light has to go through the blood vessels before it hits the retina. He said, octopus have a much better eye. I said, uh, Ed, we live in the air. UV light would destroy your retina. The blood vessels are a filter for UV light. Octopus live in the water. Water stops UV light. So they don't need the blood vessels in front. But if you want to swap eyes with an octopus, you go ahead, you'll be blind in probably a few hours.
if you get out in the sun. What they're, doing, what they're saying is, God wouldn't have done it this way, so it must have evolved. That's silly. That's a way to argue for evolution. Human eye is wired backwards, they think. You think your eye is wired backwards? This is one of their evidences for evolution. They're going to teach this to your kids and grandkids. Blood vessels are in front because it works great. I can see just fine. Got had to enhance them a little bit the last 10 years, but I'm going to be 68. My birthday, I mean, it's about time. You realize your eye is a copy from the gene code you got from your mom and dad. And they got their gene code from their mom and dad, right? So you are a copy off 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 a copy of Adam. Make a copy of any document, not a copy machine. Then make a copy of the copy. Then make a copy of the copy of the copy. By five generations, it's getting kind of tough to read. Tenth generation, really tough to read. Fifteen generation, give it up. The fact that we can still see at all is pretty amazing. The copy process is not only cool, it's fun. Okay, that's a different story. Okay, at 25 years per generation, 6,000 years, we're the 240th generation from Adam. Copy a document and copy the copy. Do that 240 times. Let me see if you can read it. I think we're amazing. Anyway, we got enough stuff on the eye in my seminar part four. Okay. Everything surrounding us looks designed, you think? Richard said, do not indoctrinate your children. Teach them to think for themselves how to evaluate evidence and how to disagree with you. Okay, Richard, I'm not your child, but I disagree with you. I think you are a religious zealot for your religion, and evolution is nothing but a religion, and I challenge you right here, right now, to a debate by YouTube, by Skype, by Zoom, any way you want to do it. We'll set it up. I want you to present the three best evidences you know of for evolution. We'll stick on that topic first. I don't have to prove God or creation. I'm not asking my theory to be taught at taxpayer expense. You guys are not only asking, you're demanding. You 2% atheists in America. He said, it's absolutely safe to say, if you meet someone who claims not to believe in evolution, that person is either ignorant, stupid, or insane. Richard, if you meet someone who claims not to believe in creation, that person is ignorant, stupid, or insane. I don't think you're stupid, Richard. I think you're insane for believing you came from a rock. You need to go see a shrink. They got them over in England, I think. If not, come on over. We'll find one over here. Lay on the couch and say, I really think this is Grandpa. I dream about him. Oh, help me shrink. You're insane for believing that. If you guys know him over there, tell him I said so. I'll take, I'll take all you atheists on. Half my brain tied behind my back. All of you, same time. If I get half the time, and we talk about one topic at a time and no interrupting. Give me your best evidence for evolution when we're done with that. Give me your second best evidence for evolution. You guys are religious zealots and that's it. So, whack an atheist Wednesday, Richard. Hope you wake up before Judgment Day. Otherwise, you're going to be in serious trouble. I'm here to help. I really am. I'm the best friend you got. You don't even know it. All right, any questions out of the crowd here? Sorry for the noise. Yes, sir. Does Richard Dawkins still hold to the theory that... Whales evolved the cows because of their organ? Yes, he believes uh, there's certainly a relationship between cows and whales in his mind. Of course, now think about it. The cow's nose is on the front. The whale's nose is on the top. They'll say, well, it slowly migrated up to the top. Hold it, hold it. You have eyeballs with optic nerve going to the brain. So the nose has to go between the eyeballs and cut the optic nerve to one of them, doesn't it? How's it going to migrate past the optic nerve? That's only one of a trillion problems you guys got. You do have a great imagination, though. Congratulations. You win the award. Thanks for joining us. Sorry about the rain. Hope you can hear it okay. Come visit Dinosaur Adventure Land. You'll get put to work, won't you? But it's fun work, isn't it? Yeah, I love it here. All right, see you tomorrow. Bye.